Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Anyegolu, and for her perspective on the news and issues that you've heard on this program today and beyond, I'm joined now in the studio by the journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Eko. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Delighted to be here, Charles. <laughs> and uh, you heard the brilliant Yurechi Kingibe there. What is your assessment of not only the way she spoke, but the task ahead for her? Yes, uh, I mean, you were able to cover a lot of ground with her, a um, very articulate woman. Mm. And uh, when she said that um, the time was ripe for me, that's for her. Um, I really reckon with that because I think that she came at the right time this time around mm. and she rode on the back of a movement. Of course, there are other reasons why she also won, but the movement was so strong that most people that joined the movement and ran for, for election on the back of labor won. Um, she also talked about the women's support and mm. I, I could not agree more. I belong to a couple of um, women groups and in 2023 elections there have been lots of uh, work by women to rally around, gather themselves together and support women mm. across party lines. So the political awareness is growing and also awareness of the power that they've got. Of course. Um, I mean, in the last eight years, the number of women in government, mm. whether it's appointed or elected, dwindled terribly it's almost to the zero level so people are aware that we should do something about it so women are forming groups and saying whichever party you run on it doesn't matter mm. we will support you so she's very accurate in, an, in her analysis there and then coming to her work in the FCT her focus I mean she mentioned you know quite all right the, the necessary things the health the education and all of that but there's also an area that I think if she's listening she might want to look into the indigenous people in um, Abuja the Gwagis mm. have been having a lot of process over the years why they want a couple of things they have said that they need a governor they would want to have the opportunity mm. or um, the chance to elect their own governor in the FCT and then they want more Senate and House of Rep seats to also represent them and their needs in, in the FCT. They have also talked about, um, I think, a, a mayoral seat. Mm. Well, I think it's mayor or governor. Yeah. And then they also talked about appointing indigenous of the FCT as ministers. I mean, I don't think there has been an indigenous of the F FCT that is a minister. So these are Apparently some of the... minister of the FCT yes, itself. Yes, minister of the FCT, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, that, that, that's a very good point. Yes. So I think some of those things, since, you know, it's a woman now, mm. mother of Abuja, I think they probably will have meetings with her and table some of these yeah, issues. I'm, I'm, and, yeah, and, and, and I, I, I'm sure it will be. I mean, obviously she's, um, she's I mean, there's so many, it's a four-year Term. So you see, there are a lot of things that will come up, but that's that's a very important point that you raised there. Um, and just moving beyond her, the first guest we had, Michael Mary, um, talking about issues again around the governorship elections. Uh, it's not just in Nasarawa State; there are protests in other places as well. Um, but it, it just seems like that has become a perennial problem with Nigerian elections. Is that because people like to always say that, you know, they don't accept losing, or is it the fact that the elections are really actually bad? Um, I think it's the latter. It is the perception that the Electoral Commission hardly ever conducts an election that is acceptable to people, mm. an election that is not manipulated. These, these are through, through accusations or allegations. In the past, there have been people that went to court and got back their mandate. So you listen to Mike O'Meary painting mm. a picture of the atmosphere in Nasarawa today. He said that Nasarawa used to be a very peaceful state. I know that. But because of elections and politics by politicians, you talked about the venom being spewed mm. by political opponents against one another, which is not healthy for a state. It's not only in Nasarawa. We have seen that in Lagos and other states, in rivers as well. This is not healthy at all for the country. So when politicians go to get to the extent of doing things like that, appealing to the vilest part of a human beings, mm. appealing to ethnic sentiments so that you can win power. And then you turn around after the elections and say, hey, let's unify, let's be one country, um, let's heal. 
what is that? Mm. You know, I mean, it, it, it doesn't work that way. So, I mean, Nasrawa, uh, the other thing is that Nasrawa, uh, what's happening in Nasrawa also happens similarly, I think, in Abia and Enugu, where the results are closed. I think uh, Kaduna as well, where the results are closed. Mm. And then there are particular local governments that were in contention. If the Electoral Commission or INEC um, has done a very good job in the past to convince people that it is working in the interest of the public and it is on the same side with the people, I do not think that um, a lot of people would uh, sort of um, not agree mm. with the position or the results right. that not they accept see. The results, exactly. Accept basically. the results, yes. Okay, well, let's move away from that slightly because you, you touched on the, the healing process and the calls, so, I mean, certainly coming from um, the, uh, the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he was the one calling for the healing. But we also know that um, he's traveling abroad and um, he's dismissed claims that he's going abroad because of ill health. He says his trip this week to Europe and Saudi Arabia is to rest ahead of his inauguration in May. But his critics have said he looked and sounded frail during the presidential campaign. What do you make of all that? We have been down this road before. When President Muhammad Buhari became president, um, he was literally living in the UK, in London or whichever hospital, it, to see his doctors. And uh, they always told us that he was on holiday, mm. he went away to rest, and then from there he was going to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj, and all those kind of stories. And this is one of the reasons why many people were against Bolatini running for president. It's not that he's not a brilliant person. It's not that he didn't do well in Lagos when he was governor. It is the fact that people feared that he might not have the, the mental rigor or you know, capacity now with his age and maybe illness. But there's no to, real evidence to support that, is there? Well, you saw the campaigns. He looked frail during the campaigns. He was almost stumbling when he was speaking and when he was working. Sometimes he needed help. So if that was not the case, um, maybe releasing a doctor's report, you know, to show the state of his, I think mm. we should be doing that actually. Release a doctor's report to people or to the people who you intend to serve so that we can see that truly you are strong enough to withstand the rigor that, um, that is needed to run this country. So running off, you know, um, to um, wherever to rest. I mean, you can go to a Budokato ranch. There are so many places in Nigeria that you can go off to rest if you really want to rest within the country. But he probably needs medical care as well. And that's why he's going. So, I Well, think in fairness to him, he's also going to Saudi Arabia for the lesser Hajj, which is kind of a religious um, thing that he has to perform. Yes, that's a good point. But you can rest here and then fly direct to Saudi Arabia, perform the Hajj. And, and come back. Well, maybe so. he's got business in the <laughs> UK. Who he's knows? got one. We are his business now. Yeah, so that's the, a good the, point. The, the point is that people are wary mm. because of what has happened the last eight years with President Muhammad Buhari. The man was hardly on seat. And then there were talks about the presidential jet packed in London, waiting for the president. All these are costs to the taxpayer. Why should the taxpayer pay all this money? to make Asso Rock a rehabilitation home or a retirement home or a hospital. Why should we do that in a country with over 200 million people that have enough strong, able-bodied men and women with capacity to run us? People don't want to hear that anymore. On that note, I want to thank you <laughs> very much <laughs> indeed. Dr. Constance Ikoku is a Journalist, of course, political affairs commentator and Arise News Analyst. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for having me. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.